Welcome everyone, I'm Jill Menz, news editor at Focuswire, and I'm joined here today by Stephanie Jones of the National Blacks in Travel and Tourism Collaborative for our latest installment of Future Proofing Travel. Uh, before we get started, uh, we all know travel is changing and we need brave innovators to shape that change. Travelport is leading the way, connecting buyers and sellers of travel through a single, independent, unconflicted marketplace. Come see what the future looks like and find out why changes for the brave at travelport.com. And with that, I want to welcome you, Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Jill, for having me. Absolutely. All right. So let's start with if you could give us a little bit more background about what it is you do in the travel industry. Wow. Where do I start? I wear <laughs> several things. I wear several hats. One, um, I like to refer to myself as a serial social entrepreneur. So I do own a cultural heritage tour company in South Florida. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of the Cultural Heritage Economic Alliance, which is a 501c3 um, nonprofit organization based out of Washington, DC. CHIA for short, and CHIA actually powers the National Blacks and Travel and Tourism Collaborative, which I am also the founder of. Oh, one more thing. I am a founder of several technology platforms as well. A little busy, <laughs> to say the least. That's great. So let's talk about the National Blacks and Travel and Tourism Collaborative. You know, how did this come together? What are your objectives? And you know, why why is this so important as travel looks towards recovery in, in 2021? Absolutely. Well, since I've been engaged in travel and tourism for about the past seven to eight years, it's always been my personal mission to disrupt the industry by making it become more diverse, equitable, and inclusive for those smaller black and brown businesses and attractions that typically are not active participants in their local tourism ecosystems. So for over the past seven years, we've been implementing several initiatives, again, that help to level the playing field for black and brown businesses. Last year, right before um, COVID um, really hit, um, hit the industry, um, I started CHIA, again, which is the nonprofit organization, um, because one of the other programs that we do is an annual cultural heritage tourism summit. And we also provide tourism um, readiness and business enhancement for those local small businesses to help them become tourism ready. So a lot of that programming falls under CHIA. So BTT, the National Blacks and Travel and Tourism Collaborative, really was launched in response to um, the industry's response to COVID. Um, having the opportunity to participate um, in many of the webin webinars sponsored by US Travel and several of the or other um, uh, national and global organizations talking about um, the research around COVID, um, about travelers when, you know, how it's really impacting the industry, there was a clear lack of representation from black leaders in those conversations. And because of the work that I do, I have a lot of small businesses that reach out to me saying, well, we're struggling. How do we survive this? What do we do? And so I thought it was really important that the black leaders, and there, there are not a lot, and when I say black leaders, I'm defining them as the CEOs and VPs, uh, DMOs, um, you know, primarily DMOs, um, you know, that represent blacks in this industry, um, reaching out to them to say, hey, we need to come together. We need to make sure that our voice and perspectives are part of these conversations as we're talking about recovery for the industry. But also those small local black businesses need to see that there is representation in the industry, how small it may be, but they need to see that there are leaders in this industry, they need to hear from us. And so that's when we decided to really formulate the National Blacks and um, Travel and Tourism Collaborative to bring you know, these black leaders together and to start to have conversations through a webinar series that we launched last summer Mm -hmm. um, so that their voices and faces could be heard and seen. And as a result of bringing all of these um, leaders together, 
Um, we've had so many different um, leaders and um, stakeholders from the industry uh, participate in those webinars. And so that indicated to us that the industry does have an interest in hearing um, from black faces and voices that represent the industry. They also have an interest in learning how they can become more diverse and inclusive within their organizations um, so that we can start to build back better, a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive industry for everybody to participate and benefit in. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you mentioned this idea of, of building back better. So it, so is the National Blacks in Travel and Tourism Collaborative, is it so would you encourage anyone in the travel industry to, to look at you as a resource to learn how to, to build back more diverse and inclusive? Is that we are absolutely a resource for the industry. Um, our three pillars are building back better um, with people, recognizing that you know we need our industry allies to help us advance Blacks in travel and tourism. We're building back better with power. And what that means is right now, you know, we have several different black travel organizations and groups that, you know, are all doing phenomenal work and helping our industry become diverse and equitable. But we also need to work collaboratively to build a black tourism ecosystem so that the work that we're doing is sustainable um, beyond what we're doing today. And then we build back better with purpose, meaning that the work um, and the initiatives that we focus on are done intentionally uh, with the purpose of creating actionable um, programs, activities, and plans that are, again, going to help us reimagine and build a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive industry for Blacks. Mm -hmm. I want to turn to another thing you mentioned earlier, this idea of leveling the playing field. And, you know, how can technology platforms in particular play a role in leveling that playing field? I, I know you recently launched a matchmaking directory for Black talent in travel and tourism. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that, what that is? Absolutely. Where, well, as we all have seen just through using Zoom over mm -hmm. the past year, um, Zoom and technology allows us to reach a broader audience. It levels the playing field for small black businesses and attractions to reach a global audience that they never had an opportunity to reach prior to COVID. Um, the platform that we just launched, the Black Tourism Talent Directory, is one of those tools that we have developed for the purpose of, again, leveling the playing field for black businesses, professionals, and students who are seeking opportunities within the industry and helping them to be matched with industry opportunities. So we're also creating an opportunity for industry stakeholders such as DMOs, travel brands, associations, and media to be able to match with vetted qualified talent because we often hear that it's hard and difficult to find black talent. OK, so the um, we call it BTTD for short um, is really a tool that we have designed to help uh, address one of those pain points for the industry, as well as for blacks who are seeking equitable opportunities to participate and make money in this industry as well. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned that, the, you know, it's, there's often this discussion that Black talent isn't out there or they can't find it. Obviously, this, this serves as an excellent resource. But, you know, what if leaders within a travel organization, you know, what else can they do to ensure that they're finding Black talent and that they know Black talent is out there with other resources in addition to, to what, what your matchmaking service does? Well, I'll start by saying that, one, I do agree you know, that black talent um, is difficult to find, but that's if they're not being intentional about where they're seeking talent. And, and one of the things I want to challenge the industry is that because we've received a lot of um, job opportunities recently since we've launched a directory, but what's going to need to happen 
um, from two perspectives. One from an industry perspective, if you really want to identify black talent, you're, we're going to have to look outside of the industry. And I, I, I know that a lot of um, organizations, they want to hire people who already have industry experience, but if we truly do want to diversify the workplace, then we have to look outside of the industry to tap organizations, business and professional black organizations where there is qualified black talent that may not have the industry exposure, right. but they definitely have the credentials and the education and the experience to fulfill a lot of these roles. Then on the flip side of that, something that we are now focusing on and we'll be focusing more on during um, when we launched a second phase of the directory mm -hmm. is educating um, Blacks outside of the industry about opportunities to work and start businesses in the industry. Because think about it, Jill, for so long, and when you look at advertisements, whether it's marketing collateral, whether it's billboards, and whenever we see someone Black in travel and tourism, they're either making a bed, they're carrying luggage, they're checking someone into the hotel. So what about that motivates educated Black people to say, I want to work in that industry? Right. So it's going to require the industry to start to reflect you know, Blacks in leadership roles, not just, you know, your front of house staff, um, but also let showing, you know, um, uh, Black people um, outside of the industry and introducing them to other opportunities other than hospitality, opportunities to work in DMOs. We have over 600 DMOs in the U.S. And a handful of them have VPs of multicultural tourism, where all 600 of them should have a VP of multicultural tourism. So, but again, showing people from these business and professional organizations that there are management and executive level opportunities, um, then I think will help them to start to take a closer look at working and travel and tourism. Right, absolutely. And so you're in phase two now with this or is phase two? Phase two or? starts in April, launches in April. And again, phase two will include a series of educational and professional development um, trainings, again, that we're going to be offering to the industry, as well as to the businesses um, and the professionals on the platform. Because one of the things we wanna make certain that our businesses are prepared to do is to become certified. Um, we, wanna make, we want to make certain that for uh, professionals who want to speak at industry events, that they, have an, that they know how to prepare an electronic media kit. Mm -hmm. We want to make certain that, again, small businesses or suppliers who want to do business with the industry, that they are tourism ready and prepare to do business with the industry. So we will be offering a series of educational and professional development trainings for both industry stakeholders, as well as Blacks in travel and tourism. We're also going to be launching a webinar series that's going to amplify and introduce new Black faces and voices and talent to the industry. Um, because again, you know, I know I'm often invited to speak um, and there's a handful of other Black um, leaders that are often invited to speak, whether, you know, it's during interviews or, or, or conferences, but it's important for the industry to know that we are not the sum of Black talent in this industry. And that's because the industry does not yet know about all of the incredible uh, Black talent um, business owners, professionals, students, and speakers that are willing and, and ready to seize the opportunity to participate. So we're going to be bringing those faces and voices to the forefront. Oh, great. That, that's incredible. That's a, I think that's a, a, absolutely a resource this industry can use. So that, that's very exciting. So thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to turn a little bit to, you know, tours and activities and operators specifically. I, I think I saw in a statement that uh, said there were only 30 Black tour operators in the United States. Or so, I, I'm not sure where I read that. But, um, you know, what are the opportunities for Black-owned businesses 
in tours and activities and what resources do they need to really thrive in the ecosystem? Yes, um, one of the platforms that we're going to be launching later this year is called Culture Unsure. And it's designed to be the, the world's first global marketplace for cultural heritage tours and activities. Again, this technology is specifically developed to level the playing field for those small independent black and brown tour operators in the US and globally to be able to have a, 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 a platform that amplifies them so that global travelers can find their tour experiences. Before COVID, as I mentioned, I am a, a Black-owned tour operator. I, I am the only full-time Black-owned tour operator company in the state of Florida, okay, that specializes in, in cultural heritage tours. So there is a handful of 30 to 40 Black tour operators that we have been able to aggregate mm -hmm. uh, onto the Culture Onshore platform. But the challenge and the problem, Jill, is before COVID hit, most of these businesses were not operating full time because they were not accessing tourist foot traffic and dollars on a consistent basis. Because again, they are, are not part of their local DMOs. So they're not marketed to um, inbound travelers who are often seeking these local authentic cultural heritage experiences. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're launching Culture on Shore for those cultural, cultural travelers, um, black leisure travelers that are seeking these types of experiences when they're traveling to destinations um, throughout the US and globally as well. So what can um, the industry do in support of these small businesses. And when we say small businesses, we're talking about the black tour operators, bus operators, restaurants, hotels, and other travel and tourism related um, museums and the other travel and tourism related um, businesses. Um, one, DMOs, and I know many of them don't even know who their local black businesses and stakeholders are. Mm -hmm. So they need to start there um, by understanding who are the cultural heritage assets and local stakeholders within their destinations that provide these local authentic experiences um, or provide services that um, inbound travelers, black travelers, cultural travelers often seek when they travel so that they can start to engage them in their marketing efforts. I'm really excited about um, an initiative that BTT has been working on in partnership with Brand USA for several months. Um, you know, they're going to be rolling out a multicultural content strategy um, because we were able to make the case to say, hey, we need to amplify these micro local businesses in destinations so that inbound travelers know that they exist um, so that travel advisors can include them on their itinerary so that tour operators can book these, you know, multicultural cultural heritage tour experiences. So BTT um, has been working to actually develop multi-day cultural heritage tour itineraries that are going to amplify Black history and Black culture and Black businesses and attractions throughout the U.S. So we need DMOs and travel brands and travel media to partner with us, just like Brand USA, to help us amplify these businesses so that, again, foot traffic and dollars are going to make an economic impact um, into these local businesses and neighborhoods. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and do you, do you think that the appetite for these cultural heritage experiences and just experiences related to the black experience, do you think that there, there's a bigger appetite for that now because people are sort of paying more attention and, and wanna, wanna learn more, wanna experience more once we can finally do things again? You know? Absolutely, absolutely. And as I mentioned before, you know, I've been on this mission for the past six or seven years, really working to amplify Black cultural heritage in the U.S. That's why we launched the um, Cultural Heritage Tourism Summit, um, because, again, um, industry stakeholders within destinations, the ones that generally are responsible for marketing and bringing tourists to the destination and helping them decide where they're going to spend their money and dollars are often unaware of the local black history and culture. So it's truly been a missed opportunity for the industry in the US at large for many, many years. 
Now, yeah. since we had the George Floyd murder last year, the Black Lives Matter movement, there is definitely a heightened awareness and interest in Black experiences, experiences in Black culture in the U.S. Um, so we do know that again, cultural travelers, black travelers and other travelers are going to want to have access you know, to learn about the black experience, whether it's the civil rights movement, whether you know, it's the Underground Railroad, whether it's the Black Lives Matter movement, whether it's the black church or black food, you know, there are so many facets of black, the black experience. You know? And again, I'm, I'm excited because you know, I feel that within the US, the industry is finally taking cultural heritage tourism seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I've met with so many DM DMOs over the past year who recognize that they can do more, should be doing more to amplify the black businesses and experiences within their destinations. And I applaud them for that. Um, and, you know, so, but BTT recognized that, you know, oftentimes they don't know where to start. Right. And so yeah. we're here to be a, a tool for the industry because the model that we've created in South Florida, where we have engaged local businesses, whenever we do a cultural heritage tour, you have four to six small businesses and local residents now actively participating and making money in the travel and tourism industry. So we've built out this cultural heritage tour model that can be replicated worldwide um, in destinations. So again, we want to be a resource and a tool for destinations that really want to engage um, their local stakeholders and do a better job of supporting them and marketing them to inbound travelers. Absolutely. Great. All right. So we're going to turn to an audience question here quick. Uh, one comment says, loving the amplification strategy, Stephanie. Uh, have you had any success in getting similar activity recognized by the so-called giants of the industry, the major booking platforms like Expedia, Booking.com, and, and other major platforms? Great question. We've had many conversations and most recently we've had a conversation with several of the heads at TripAdvisor. Um, again, I mentioned I have a, a, a tour company and, and we are on TripAdvisor with our reviews. But the issue is again, um, amplifying the business, the black businesses on TripAdvisor and really determining, you know, whether or not these businesses are actually making money to the point of being able to sustain and grow their businesses. And as I mentioned, most black tour operators are not. Okay. So what I've said to TripAdvisor, let's see, instead of you all reinventing the wheel, because we know a lot of travel brands now, you know, they are, you know, they want to do more um, around DEI and the amplification of black businesses. But what we're saying to them, because there are several technology solutions that have been created by black founders that have not been amplified or supported or funded. So what we're saying and not only to trip advisors, but other OTAs, instead of you reinventing the wheel and feeling like now you have to create a platform specifically to amplify black businesses, partner with black founders who have already created these technologies to help amplify you know, these platforms um, and to drive more tourist foot traffic and dollars. So we've had conversations with TripAdvisor We've also had conversations with Fair Portal. Um, and one of the things Fair Portal um, through Cheap Aware has offered to do is they're going to create a page on their blog that will be dedicated to amplifying cultural heritage tour operators. Um, it will be a platform for BTT to amplify black businesses and experiences and destinations. So we do applaud and appreciate um, those travel brands that have met us at the table to say, how can we collaborate? How can we work together to amplify our efforts? All right, absolutely, great. Uh, we'll do one more audience question here. Um, uh, can I ask, are DMO, DMOs in the states financed by the states or are they private bodies? And is there any state funded scheme in place to encourage black entrepreneurship? Well, I know there are several different structures 
for DMOs, like for instance, in South Florida, the Miami um, DMO, um, the, actually most DMOs are funded by hotel bad taxes, okay? And then you do have um, some that are membership based, uh, meaning that they derive revenue from paid memberships. Then you also have some that are membership based, but they don't charge any fees. So they're funded by their local county government. So it just depends on, you know, which destinations, you know, and where you are. Um, it, that depends on their structure and how they generate revenue. Um, as far as, and I'm, I'm not certain, can you repeat the second part of the question? I know it has something to do with businesses, establishing or supporting businesses. Are there any state funded schemes in place to encourage black entrepreneurship? I mean, again, I, I can't speak for every state because I don't know what they're doing. Um, I do know that, you know, through the Biden administration, you know, that is one of his priorities is to um, fund and to help um, start and scale black businesses. So I'm excited about that. Um, I also serve on the United States Travel and Tourism Advisory Board, and we were um, charged by the uh, Secretary of Commerce to develop um, 10 recommendations that can be that can be presented to Congress for legislation. And so I fought hard to make certain that at least one or two of the recommendations um, were to provide amplification and funding support to help Black travel and tourism businesses, um, you know, startups, as well as to scale and grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did want to look at startups a little bit, especially, you know, Black founders, Black tech founders. We know that, that they've been historically underfunded. And, you know, my question is, do you, do you see inv investors changing their perspective and approach? And why is that so important that they, that they consider these founders? You know, again, I, I think as a um, as a result of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, I think it struck a core, not just in travel and tourism, but across the board, world, world worldwide, um, across industries. Um, again, I think in 2019, between November and December, I participated in I think about six pitch competitions, pitching for culture onshore, you know, for investors for culture onshore, and. I'll have to say in 2019, from my experience, and because I do know other, um, there's a few other black founders in the um, travel tech space, and all of us do a lot of pitching competitions, but have not been able to be funded. Um, even though, again, we're offering and bringing game-changing um, technologies to the industry. Um, you know, so I do think that investors you know, are starting to take a close look, closer look at Black founders. Um, as a matter of fact, I've been contacted by a couple investors um, who wanted to meet me and to learn more about the technologies that we are rolling out. So I think across the board, you know, throughout industries and funders, um, because we see on Zoom, not Zoom, I'm sorry, on LinkedIn, um, so many corporations, um, funders, are now allocating dollars in support of black businesses. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, as far as funding black founders, um, I think the consideration is there, the taking a closer look at us is there, but I don't feel like it's translated into any, any tangible investments at this point. Right, right. So, so that's hopefully the next step then we can get to as we're paying more attention and, and can do more to elevate these businesses and give them an opportunity to really thrive and make a change in the industry. Absolutely. Uh, we've got a couple more audience questions here. Of, um, what destinations are doing a good job of showcasing the full range of cultures in their destinations? Okay, you're going to put me on the spot. <laughs> but no, and, and I don't mind sharing um, because I again, I've spoken to a lot of um, DMOs over the past year. Um, and I will say that there are, you know, a handful of destinations that, you know, are doing, you know, a great work even before COVID in Miami, you know, um, I have to give them credit. Um, that's where I launched my cultural heritage tour business. Mm -hmm. um, they do a great job and they have been doing a great job in engaging their multicultural businesses, amplifying them um, in their marketing. Um, they have a, they do have a multicultural VP of multicultural um, tourism. I'll give um, Connie Canard a shout out. 
They um, and Connie and her team, again, have been consistent in um, making certain that their multicultural businesses and attractions are amplified through their marketing, um, through their Art of Black uh, Miami um, program that they launched several years ago that highlight Black culture and art. So there are some destinations that are doing some great things. Richmond, Virginia, um, they have a platform specific called Black um, Richmond, Virginia, where they highlight and amplify their Black um, travel and tourism businesses. Um, New Orleans, also, they have a multicultural platform that highlights. So there are some DMOs that are, you know, have been doing a great job and, um, you know, I think can be great examples. Um, and for those who haven't, again, it's, it's okay, um, but you can start. And if you don't know where to start, you know, we're happy, you know, to have a conversation with you to help you strategize on how to engage your local stakeholders, your black businesses, um, how to develop your cultural heritage um, tour products so that you can um, have those types of experiences to market and promote to inbound travelers. Apologies if you hear a siren in the background. The, you know, New York City can't change it. Um, <laughs> all right, one more audience question here. Uh, these are excellent initiatives. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm based in Canada, and I'm interested in learning more about how to attract black and brown talent from outside the industry. If you're looking for executive level talent, how do you ensure your job posting is being considered by a wide variety of talent? Good question. Okay. Again, thank you. Um, again, we have to look outside of the industry as well. So even in Canada, I'm certain that there are several black business professional organizations, sororities and fraternities. And as a matter of fact, what we're doing now, we um, are reaching out and, and going, going to be looking to partner with the National Black, um, the National Black Masters in Business, um, I'm sorry, National Blacks um, MBA, um, organization, um, the Divine Nine, which consists of the, the major nine Black sororities and fraternities, mm -hmm. uh, women, Black women professional organizations. Uh, there are so many national organizations, whether they're in the U.S., but they're globally as well, where you can tap Black talent. But again, oftentimes it's going to require some education so that they understand other than hospitality, what opportunities, what executive level opportunities exist. Um, so we'll be happy, you know, to collaborate, collaborate with anyone in the US or um, around the world, you know, to help develop a strategy for identifying or tapping um, talent, black talent, um, but in your country or again, within your destination. All right, we are coming up on time here, but I, I do want to just wrap up with, you know, what, how do we keep this conversation and momentum going? Because, you know, the industry is recovering, the world is sort of recovering, you know, people are paying attention now, but we really don't want people to go back to business as usual. How, how do we make sure that we're not going back to business as usual and we're keeping this going? That's a great question, Jill. And, and that's what I focus on every single day, which is why if you know me, you know, I go hard and I've been going hard for BTT um, because this is truly a window of opportunity for Blacks and travel and tourism. And we know as the industry starts to rebound and things start to normalize, Yes, is you know, destinations, travel brands are going to start to think less about DEI. Mm -hmm. So right now, while the focus and emphasis is on DEI, where what I suggest, you know, everyone within the industry do is one, as you are, if you don't have, or if you're not addressing DEI within your organization, that you develop a committee, you know, um, that is, is, that's also inclusive of um, diverse voices and, and perspectives within your destination. Develop that committee and then charge that committee with developing a short-term and a long-term DEI strategy that's going to uh, address DEI within your organization um, through your hiring practices. Um, how do you hire um, black suppliers? How are you marketing multicultural to mark multicultural audiences? Um, how are you engaging your black stakeholders? Because this is work 
that is long term. It's not just work that we should be focusing on in the moment. So developing a long term DEI strategy is key. But then the other part of that is you have to have accountability partners um, that are going to not chastise you, but challenge you to make certain that you are executing on these strategies. Um, and also I would suggest create some type of internal or annual assessment where you're able to assess or do a report card on your DEI program so that you can measure your efforts to see how far did you come? What have you been able to accomplish this year? What more needs to be done? Because we, we have to focus on sustainability Yep. you know, around DEI in order for us to build back a better and more diverse, equitable, inclusive industry. So even within um, your corporate goals and your corporate culture and your mission, DEI should be interwoven in that. So every decision that's made on an executive leadership um, level, it it's DEI is automatically part of the consideration for what type of programs you implement, you know, your marketing strategy, your business strategy, it has to become interwoven into the, the corporate culture. Right. Absolutely. That, that's really excellent advice. And I'm sure those tuning in have a lot more questions and might want to learn more. So where can people find you to, to learn more? Well, I would love to connect with anyone who wants to learn more about our work or um, explore how we can assist you in your efforts. Uh, my email address is stephanie at blacksintourism.org. And you can visit blacksintourism.org to learn more about BTT. Great. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie. And, you know, thanks everyone for tuning in. I want to remind that this episode of Future Proofing, Proofing Travel is sponsored by Travel Port. It takes Thank courage you. to change and Travel Port is reinventing travel retail, starting with its own new look. Come see what the future looks like and find out why change is for the brave at travelport.com. And thank you again, everyone, for tuning in. And thank you so much, Stephanie. This was really excellent. I really, this was great. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.